Hi Theory students! Today we're going to be doing the next part of our Chromatic Harmony and Voice Leading chapter. In particular, we'll be learning about several new kinds of chromatic chords, and this will pretty much round out our repertoire of chromatic harmony devices. The first one will be the common tone diminished seventh chord, and then we'll discuss the common tone augmented sixth chord, and then two kinds of five seven chords with altered fifths. First, the common tone diminished seventh chord. It expands either the tonic or the dominant in major keys only. And just as a neighboring 6-4 expands a 1 or a 5 by going to the upper neighbors of the 3rd and 5th of the chord, the common tone diminished 7th chord expands a major chord by going to the lower neighbors of the 3rd and 5th. If you remember, the neighboring 6-4 was sometimes called a pedal 6-4, so here the bass note, the root of the 1 or the 5, does not move through this expansion. Let me show you. So here in this example in D major, where we've got a one chord, a neighboring chord, and another one chord, the diatonic version that we all learned was to go to the upper neighbor of those, and this was our 464. So diatonically, it sounds like this. Now what we're saying is that we could go the other way with this. There's our pedal. And instead of going to the upper neighbors of the fifth of the chord and a third of the chord, let's go to the lower neighbors, only with a bit of a twist. Let's make these lower neighbors chromatic so that those are half-step relationships. There's one more little twist to this. If you look at the chord this spells, E sharp, G sharp, we're missing a fifth, and then D is the seventh, uh, it's fairly clear that this is the structure of a diminished seventh chord. So sometimes composers will leave that fourth voice just as the bass does on the tonic, and sometimes they will go down to the fifth of the chord. Going down to the fifth is the usual way to do it. So it sounds like this. This is unlike the 7-7 seven, seven of something chords because instead of every voice moving, I've got a common tone. And when I do this fourth voice, I've actually got to skip into and out of it, which we didn't allow before. So because of the common tone, we give this a special name. It's called a common tone diminished seventh. You can write it like that. You don't have to write sharp to diminished second invert, third inversion rather. Ugh. And this can work equally well on the five chord. So here we are going to the lower neighbor of E and the lower neighbor of C sharp. What's interesting about this is that in the tenor voice, when I go down this way, I can go back to A for a regular five, or in this particular case, I could even go to G as part of a 5-7 chord. And it's a really neat device. I could even do things in which 
I don't approach it from the 5 chord, but from another chord, and have this as an incomplete neighbor that way or that way. What's important is that when the common tone diminished 7th resolves, it resolves with a common tone to the root of the next chord, whether it's 1 here or 5 there. To complete the notes for what I just showed you, the doubled note of the 1 or 5 chord, which here was a tenor voice, moves to the 5th of the diminished 7th and back again. Although it's a fully diminished 7th, it doesn't act like a 7-7. Seven, seven. The bass, which is the 7th of this chord technically, stays as a common tone, and the root of the chord resolves not to the next root the way a 7-7 seven, seven of something would do, but the root resolves to the third of the chord. So going back here, if this is an E-sharp chord, E-sharp, G-sharp, B, and D, the E-sharp goes to F-sharp, the third of the one chord. Here, B-sharp, D-sharp, A, uh, F-sharp, A, the B-sharp goes to C-sharp, the third of the five chord. Now on to the common tone augmented sixth. Imagine a German sixth, scale degrees flat six, one, flat three, and sharp four. Now picture the tonic in the bass. So here in C major, I've spelled out the German sixth, A flat, C, E flat, F sharp. The twist here is that if I were using this German sixth to go to five, I would put the A flat in the bass and then take it down to G for the five chord. What I'm going to do instead is to keep the C in the bass. So here's what happens. And whether I spell this as E flat or D sharp, it sounds the same as this. I'll talk about that in a second. And this is the common tone augmented sixth. It will resolve to a one chord. Note the augmented sixth a flat and F sharp go out to G's just as they did before. The difference is the G is now the fifth of this one chord, not the root of a dominant chord. You could see that I spelt this D sharp because it's going to E, but in the literature when they use this, it's equally common to see this as an E flat going to an E natural as a D-sharp going to an E. So what it sounds like is this. I'm sorry. Um. In order to get this to work, we have a somewhat unusual doubling. We double the fifth of the one chord, but we can still get that to work. Whether we spell this E flat or D sharp, the effect is the same. Note that the tonic is in the bass now, and here's the common tone. But when we spell the rest of the chord, we will typically put the A flat below the F sharp so that this ends up being an augmented sixth interval in the upper voices, not a diminished third, which would be the inversion of that. And now the 5-7 with altered fifth. We'll look first at raising the fifth. So imagine if we had a dominant chord in the key of F, C, E, G, and B flat, when we raise the fifth and G becomes G sharp, this triad is augmented. 
we still keep the minor 7th B-flat. We use this in major keys, and as usual, we raise a note with the intention of continuing it up a half step. I'll show you the spacing, because usually in this case, the G-sharp will be above the B-flat, and it'll look something like this. So now, when I make that a G-sharp, that goes up to A. The B-flat, the seventh of the 5-7, goes down to A. And whether I take the leading tone up to F or down to C, it works either way. But we feature a one chord with doubled third now. So instead of this, we get this. I did that as a passing tone. It could have just as easily been Note, by the way, B-flat up to G-sharp forms an augmented sixth interval, but this is just an altered dominant. It's not an augmented sixth chord the way we've studied them. The augmented sixth resolves outward to an octave the way all of them do so far. The only difference is this octave is the third of the one chord. But as you space these, put the raised fifth of the chord above the seventh of the chord. And finally, the 5-7 with altered fifth. This time we're going to be lowering the fifth. And this is usually used in minor mode. Since the fifth of a 5 chord is scale degree 2, lowering it makes for flat 2. And it always continues down to 1 when the 5-7 goes to a 1 chord, whether it's in the bass or in an upper voice. So over here, if this is our usual 5-7 to 1 in D minor, what happens when we lower the 5th here, It's still a dominant 7th chord, but is a little more jarring than the regular one, of course. Note, by the way, that I put the leading tone above lowered 2. Once again, somewhere in the upper voices is an augmented 6th interval that resolves outward to an octave. Sometimes, we might even put this in the bass. So now it's going to be a 5-4-3. It's the bass note that gets lowered, so that's why the alteration doesn't appear in the figures here. But when I resolve this, 7th of the chord goes down. As usual with these inversions of 5-7s, I now get a complete one when I resolve this. That's all for today. We'll talk more about these in class.